where they were faced with head-to-head -head competition and they needed to differentiate themselves. So let's talk about how we got involved. We got involved because for 20 years now our firm has been helping folks manifest their brand in face-to-face -face ways. We help folks create exhibits and environments and events on which they use as a platform to get their message out in the market. And our clients, because we realized that we should listen much more closely, our clients said, would you do what you're doing for us in the mobile space, in the thing that goes to a city like Las Vegas and sets up and stays up for four days and then packs in a suitcase and gets ready for the next one, would you consider doing that in the permanent space? And sometimes we work with agency partner, sometimes we work directly with the firm, sometimes we work with the parent office or headquarters, sometimes we work with regional offices, but they all said the same thing and that is, you know, I want to close business from my events, but I'm also seeing a huge trend in folks doing due diligence. The odds are really high that if they come here I can close them, but we need help. Because we, like Will Smith, still have our painter's clothes on. We don't yet. Our, the strength of our pants alone is not enough to compensate for our first impression. And so we just listened to clients and clients took us there. And so the first installation we did was back, we remember it vividly, back during Hurricane Katrina and we had exactly 10 business days to execute it. You'll see that case study here in a moment. But uh, we had to learn how to not only understand and deliver and execute against the branding standards that our agency friends really held true to and really knew and and really had worked hard to develop but we had to learn how also to implement and fabricate and design with four walls and ceilings and concrete blocks behind drywall and all of those things that can drive you crazy and so we developed this thought of a lobby makeover and we put up a website to try to create a dialogue about it um, uh, and that's part of the platform today but a lobby makeover is simply um, taking and creating from boring to branding. We talk about it as a makeover because as you and I have watched The Swan and What Not to Wear and Extreme Home Makeover, there's a couple of themes that come up there, right? We know that they go from ho-hum or undesirable, you know, to cosmetically enhanced sometimes. They go from, you know, kind of mediocre to standard bearer. So that's the concept of makeover. The other thing that you often see in those shows, Trading Space has kind of started this, is you also see that they go during that in a certain time frame. And they go through that also with a certain budget. And we just feel that the same thing should be done. Uh, as we launch this, one of the things we realized is that business has to go on. So like an ER surgery team, we've got to get in and we've got to get out and let the business go on. So we're quite proud of the fact that with a client's help, um, we can go in and do that in, a, in, in quite a swift amount of time. Now, there's some questions for you to ask yourself. Is this right for you? Should you consider this? So let's offer some questions, okay? First of all, do potential customers visit your facility? That's the most obvious one. Now, uh, we have a client who just made over their whole facility. You're going to see some, some of their photographs in the presentation. And they did it purely for their employees purely for their employees because to test question number one they would answer no they don't visit our facility and he told us that blatantly but he said to recruit the top talent that I have to recruit they've got to be proud of where they work and they've got to get it they've got to get what we're going for so you may answer yes or no to question number one test number two says do you need to make your mission vision or values clear to those folks that visit or that reside there and this is critically important uh, do you need clarifying it? Do you need to convey it? Uh, have you grown so much that the employees need to understand what the values of the organization are? When we go into an exercise with a client, it's very common for us to see customer-facing objectives and employee-facing objectives. And the customer-facing objectives are all about what is that brand promise and all about that mission and vision and then suddenly they say, you know, our employees really need to get that too. Our employees really need to clearly hear what we're doing. And this is oh so true uh, for the not-for-profit organizations. 
And we've done a number of not-for-profit organizations because they believe that their donors and constituents and stakeholders and benefactors have to get what they do. And please pardon the disrespect to nonprofits, but they have to get what they do differently, uniquely, in order to engage, loan money, uh, be a donor. The third test is, do you need your employees to be ambassadors of your brand? And I really like this one. We, we've had a number of clients who say, you know, they, they, we, we, you know, we tell them in a meeting what we do. And then we'll go into a service engagement and the, the customer will call and say, you know, do you, do you all do this? Oh, I don't know. Let me check if you, we do this. And the president of the company will say, of course we do that. Have you not read the brochure? Of course we do that. You know, we, I mean, I'm trying to tell you, we've added that service offer. Well, just like all of us, if it's not in front of us, we forget it. And so sometimes having what we do, that vision, values, uh, and mission in front of employees is critically important because they become ambassadors for our brand. They are able to converse about that. I have a great story about that. Um, we did an installation for a telecommunications company. And they uh, asked us with their architect and agency to put their values in very substantial ways. You'll see some of the photographs in a moment. Very substantial ways throughout their building. We know that project pretty well, so we can tell you what those values were. They were fun, collaboration, play to win, integrity, uh, and uh, one more that I can't think of. So I happened to be uh, interviewing a prospective employer at my office. And I noticed on her resume that she had recently worked for this telecommunications firm. That's interesting. So I said, can you give me an example of a great employee, some of the attributes that a great employee has? She said, sure. Collaboration, integrity, fun, play to win. And I even got to prompt her on the fifth one because I happened to know it then and she couldn't recall the fifth one. And it, it was an amazing story of how that employer, employee took, you know, it, it sunk in with her, right? She got what those core values were because she'd been around it. So she was armed for the interview with a firm outside of hers to know that those were traits of a great team member, and they are. But that's a great story, really, and, and that's a true story that all of us kind of laugh about. Uh, we didn't hire her. Uh, that question alone wasn't enough to turn the tables. <laughs> But it worked out okay. Um, the next question is probably one of the most common characteristics that we see among our clients who do these lobby makeovers into branded environments. And that is either are they growing, are they about to grow, or do they want to grow? And the reason is because so many of the variables are interrelated to this one attribute. The fact that I really need employees to get it fast is related to growth. The fact that I really need this changing marketing message to be always in front of customers. The fact that it is so hard for us to keep up to date in all channels, all media, all touch points, who we are. That fast growing driver is really critical. And they feel like it's got to be clear. Uh, people like to associate with success. You've heard that uh, term before. And nothing could be more true here. And that is people want to feel as though I'm buying a promise of quality and stability and growth. And so growth is another test for whether or not this is appropriate. And the last one we've also seen come true, and that is whether or not you're facing an, uh, some new financing, whether or not you're considering selling the business, whether you're putting yourself up for a merger or acquisition. These things are really important because they, it lets us kind of get polished up and dressed up. It lets us just as uh, you said earlier as we open, it lets us put our interview clothes on. It lets us st set the st standard so that we're ready to receive guests. And so we've got our game face on. And so that's the fifth test. So we like to say if you know three or four of those resonate with you or with the client that you may have, then you may need a lobby makeover. Any question about those test questions? Uh, and then let's go into some case studies that I think will equip you with some real uh, specifics. Any questions about those? I'm going to trust that the silence is indicative of you being on the edge of your seat and can't wait for the next slide. Uh, but uh, if not, and you need some caffeine, you help yourself to um, 
uh, to a beverage.